This episode of the Sloopcast is brought to you by the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company is an Ohio-based company where they say our seasoning will take your barbecue from good to great. Mad Canadian will be in Cary this Thursday from 4 to 7 at the OLC Shrine Cafeteria. This is your only chance to get some Mad Canadian this week, so be sure to head on out again to the OLC Shrine Cafeteria in Cary, Ohio, this Thursday from 4 to 7 o'clock. Be sure to check out uh, the Mad Canadian social media sites, Facebook, Twitter, find out more information about him and his food truck and upcoming news. Mad Canadian Barbecue Company, the official barbecue of the Cary High School Blue Devils. This episode of the Zucker is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. The Iron Bean Coffee Company is a world-class hand-roasted micro-batch coffee company. All of your coffees are fresh roasted to order. Um, it's also a veteran uh, marine that is owned company. Uh, they are based out of Perrysburg, which is near Toledo, Ohio. All of their beans are fair trade certified and USDA organic. What does that mean? Well, it means that they're taking care of both the earth and the farmers because we <laughs> we need those things. Uh, yeah, so it's not only are they fresh roasting their beans so that you're getting the freshest possible beans They're you know, because they're a, an integrity based company that takes care of their customers and doesn't rip them off and doesn't cut corners. But that integrity and that honesty also reaches in the other direction back to the farmers. Uh, back to the farms in Colombia and Brazil and Uganda and Honduras and Peru and Ethiopia and Indonesia to make sure that they're also earning a, a good living. Um, so you can support this company. And oh, by the way, the coffee is amazing. Just so we're clear, the coffee is amazing. All of that, all that stuff also makes the coffee amazing. So you can support this company and this podcast by buying some coffee over at ironbeancoffee.com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. What's up, YouTube? What's up, Discord? Talk about some national games from the previous weekend. Can Team up. Chaos. Team Chaos in full, full force this weekend. This year. And I, I love it. I love it. Yeah. Let's let's just get into it, Kyle, because it's insane. We've got barbecue back here. You're all invited. Welcome to the Slipcast. How are you doing today, Kyle? Doing really well, Jared. <laughs> seven for seven in the oh, okay. in the picks. I said I it on forget. Monday's episode, and I he, said I'd say it again in this one. He's still, he's seven still. for seven in our sloop picks. We don't we don't get too many. We don't get too many perfect picks, and that tells you that and that tells you right there, everybody. Don't real life gamble. <laughs> No, oh, Kyle, that's not when you're supposed to remind people of that. Um, yeah, slew picks went uh, well for, but I mean, I went five for seven, which normally you feel really good about five for seven. Um, but Kyle has to go and get the seven for seven and make my five for seven look mediocre. So that that has uh, closed the gap. Kyle and I are now tied for the year. Kyle had a bit of a rough start, but he's a. Uh, He's been bettering me the past couple of weeks and he's closed that gap and we're we're now tied at the slew picks. Um, Kyle, we picked a really good week to name the Friday episode Easy Money, because if we called that Easy Money and then turn around and had a really bad week, um, we'd look stupid. But we called that episode Easy Money, then turned around and went a collective quick math 13 for. 12 for <laughs> 12. 12 for 14. Um, so had you uh, listened to us, you couldn't have because Kyle and I disagreed on two of the games. So that wouldn't have made any sense. But uh, if you'd have picked the right five games, which were, by the way, the five games I said I would go to hell for. Um, the other two, I didn't feel great about. But the, the but the five I said I was going to get, I got. Damn it. Yep. Uh, so in our in our picks here, 13, we have 13 people who went at least five for seven and then 17 who went positive. Yeah. 
So yeah, definitely a good weekend here. So, all right, enough of that. Let's get into the the national scope here, Jared. And as I mentioned to the YouTube only listeners here, Team Chaos, not not just this week. Uh, this week was Team Chaos was just taking souls this week, but all year, all year, it's been a crazy, crazy college football year so far. Kyle, nine. Nine top 25 teams lost this week. Love it. Oregon, Arkansas, Notre Dame, Florida, Ole Miss, Texas A&M, um, Fresno, UCLA, Baylor, all losing. Yep. Now, a couple of those teams that. lost to other top 10 teams, and that's not like not mm-hmm. like true team chaos because that's just a really good team lo- losing to another really good team. But still. That's a that's a ton of top 25 teams to fall. And the thing is, is that it's not even abnormal. Uh, six the previous week. Six the week previous to that. Five the week previous to that. Eight the week previous to that. It's not a good year to be a top 25 team. And it is a good nope. year to be uh, to, to lose a game in September because the chaos is already paving the road for your redemption arc your Ohio State Buckeyes. Yes, sir. So, Jared, go ahead and pull up the graph here. Let's go ahead and get into our week after week five ratings here where we grade or rate the uh, all the teams or teams that we care about talking about uh, in the major five uh, power conferences plus a few extras there. Yeah, let's uh, let's do this. Um, we already we already did some of these. I know it's just some feedback we got from some of our sloop cats. Just like, you know, don't waste a ton of time talking about teams down in the D's and E's and F's. So we we prearranged. So we made some movements already, um, and then we move, we kind of slipped some of the teams we wanted to talk about over to the right just to streamline this a bit. So that's what right. we'll be doing. Uh, Kyle, you want to start us off in the Big Ten. Um, we'll, we'll talk about what happened in the Big Ten this week, and we'll see if we want to make any adjustments to the chart as a result. Yeah, absolutely. So we'll, we'll start off Iowa taking care of business over Ohio State's next opponent, Maryland, 51 to 14. Do want to note that Ohio State does open up and may change here, but does open up as I believe I saw a 21 point favorite. I'll, so I'll take, Iowa taking care of it. Bu- Iowa taking care yeah. of business. Solid, solid A there. I don't think they need to move. And Maryland, wherever they're at, um, uh, maybe move them down to a D. Actually, probably move them down from where they're at from a C down to a D there. And Maryland, not as good as not as good as what we thought they might have done this year, or at least didn't put up as good of a fight against Iowa here. So I I think Maryland probably moved, dropped down to a D. A, lar- a large part of what we were hoping for, not maybe not hoping for, but like maybe what Maryland fans were hoping for out of Maryland, a lot of that road on how good of a year Tua was going to have. And um, he he had a really, really bad game against Iowa. I'll say that much. Baby Tua did not have a good game against Iowa. No, that. That game, oh, what was that? I have to look. There at was some it. sort of crazy stat about his interceptions and how many interceptions. Yeah, but I mean, I don't want to waste a ton of time talking about Maryland because we'll be doing that on on Thursday. So, yeah, not not a good not a good week for Maryland here. Illinois escaping Charlotte twenty four fourteen. Illinois can stay in the F tier. Just not a good not yeah. a good team this year. Minnesota pulls up a win against Purdue um, another team we thought we had higher hopes of them doing better injuries ha- happen yeah. at Minnesota yeah. here so I think Minnesota or yeah, if Minnesota, Ibrahim's still on that team it's a different team but he's not so mm-hmm. um, I'm not sure where we have Minnesota at here D, uh, D which feels appropriate that, that's that's yeah I think that's probably right and then Purdue can probably stay at D uh, maybe down to E, but I say just for this week, you can keep Purdue yeah. at D. We don't, we don't even waste a ton of time talking about if Purdue's yeah. a D or an E. All right, moving on here, Michigan here, Michigan. I thought I thought Wisconsin was going to put up a 
tougher battle here, but man, Michigan, Michigan, an A tier. Would you move Michigan to A tier yet? I I think it's I think it's time. Um, their pass rush looks really good. Their defense looks really good. I think their offense is incredibly human. But honestly, there's a lot of teams with a lot of flaws in A tier right now. Um, so I'm not. You don't have to be like perfect to get into A tier, and Michigan's not perfect. I I think their offense leaves a lot to be desired. Um, but yeah, we, we'll move Michigan up into the A tier. I have no problem with that. Yeah. Uh, let's see here. The other team up there at the A tier, uh, Penn State shuts out Indiana uh, 24 real, nothing. Before we move on, that, Wisconsin. Wisconsin. Uh, I want to keep them at C tier. Once again, I, so. I really don't feel like this final score, second week in a row, or I don't feel like the final score was indicative of how close this game actually was. Um, I feel like they played better than the 21 points they lost by. Um, and it is, you know, and it's, it's another loss to another pretty good team. I, I just, I don't, I feel like C is still appropriate here. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, Mertz, Mertz is just, bad he's I, he's having a bad bad year uh and i'll say this and this is a really weird thing to say about a wisconsin team their offensive line's not helping him no they, they rushed the ball 32 times only 43 yards rushed yeah their their offensive line's not good which is just the weirdest thing to say about a wisconsin team it is all right uh penn state shuts out indiana 24 nothing again indiana another team i thought we'd have Thought they'd be better, thought they might have had a better offense uh, showing here uh, early this season. But, man, it, it, this team's just spiraling down, down. So, you know, we keep I think it, I, I think it's time, Jared, that you put maybe put Indiana down to the D tier. I think that is totally fair. We keep expecting Penix to to show up to a game, maybe even grow a little bit, but. He just sort of lays there and he's not doing much. So um, he's just not helping out Indiana much. No, just. Yeah, just not showing up, not just not showing up when the time is right. No, uh, really just not rising yeah. to the occasion. Nope. All right. Uh, let's see the other the other games here. Michigan State. Michigan State beats Western Kentucky 48 to 31. Not the kind of defense showing that. We thought Michigan State's defense was they, um, they, has they shown let, this year, but 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 that, but that says a lot about Michigan State this season so far. Nobody really expected much of Michigan State here. They were unranked and they slowly been moving up. And now, now that um, we just saw that the AP and coaches poll come out, and again, doesn't really doesn't really matter this early on. But Michigan State now ranked eleventh. And that's five teams here. And you look, if you're looking at our chart here, Penn State, Iowa, Ohio State, Michigan, in our A tier. Michigan State, I just don't feel comfortable putting them in the A tier no. yet, but a solid B tier right now, just Absolutely. because of what they've been able to do this year. Undefeated still. Yeah. I it's good for Michigan State right now. Yeah, if they beat Michigan, they would swap tiers for sure, gangland. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then the, and the, then the last game here. Well, I just want to say uh, real quick about Michigan state, Western Kentucky threw up a bunch of points at the end of the game. Um, yeah, I, I don't, I wasn't watching it. I haven't seen any of it. I would assume that maybe they were scoring points on Michigan state's backup defense. Um, at least even if it wasn't wholesale, the backup defense, maybe at least partially the backup defense. I, the Michigan state, played better than the final score indicates. All right, fair enough. All right, the last game here, Nebraska was not expecting this score. Nebraska taking it to Northwestern, 56 to 7. Kyle, is it time to drop Northwestern to the F tier? Yes. Yep. Northwestern just, yeah, just bad, bad, bad. Kyle, uh, uh, do we still, consider still, moving still, Nebraska up to the D tier? Not yet. I agree. We'll, we'll see next week. I, I I'd keep them at 
E tier at the top of E tier here, but not not yet, especially what we've seen first of the season. Maybe they've turned a new leaf here. We'll see next week. They're, they're I, I, I don't. Next Sunday. Yeah, I, I don't know if we want to take a, a, a win over Northwestern. All right, uh, the, two the last right one now. here, Rut, the last one here, Jared Rutgers. You want to keep Rutgers at C? Or do you think that <laughs> the exposure that Ohio State showed Rutgers here deserves them, has puts them down to the D tier? Or is this just that Ohio State just. They, I think they met Ohio State. Doing what they should be doing. I think they met Ohio State at exactly the wrong moment to meet Ohio State. Um, you have to remember this Rutgers team also played Michigan to a seven point loss, which looks yeah. like a good loss right now. Um, I, I feel comfortable leaving them at C tier for the moment, uh, although they're definitely teeter teetering. Yeah, teetering mm-hmm. on potentially falling down to the D tier. All right, fair enough. All right, so that's the that's the Big Ten teams here. Some move up, some move down here, but I I, I do like this. Yes, Stewart. Yes, Michigan still sucks, but they're, they're they're looking good right now. They're looking good defensively. So here we are, Jared. Um, Big Ten done here. Uh, should we do a quick ad break here? Yeah, let's do that. All right, cool. All right, the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company. I'll go ahead and start us off, Jared. Uh, uh, serving up some great food from his food truck. So mention where you can find him and his food truck this week. Let me read some of the reviews that the Mad Canadian has here. Uh, here's one here uh, saying, saying from a elementary school uh, saying that they, uh, they hire the Mad Canadian Barbecue Company to serve their staff. Uh, very good barbecue. The barbecue baked beans were his favorite. Very delicious. Another review saying best briskets ever. Very nice people. And a third one, best barbecue I've had in a long time. Not to be missed. And another saying everything is a 10 making barbecue great. Five stars. Thank you. And then here, here's another one about saying the pulled pork was lean and delicious. Kicking coleslaw and the dill's still potato salad were homemade and were great we'll definitely eat here again these are these are reviews on on the social media pages that you can find out if you want to find out your first yourself go check out the mad canadian and where him and his food truck will be heading to next over at his facebook and twitter page mad canadian barbecue company the official barbecue for the Cary high school blue devils this episode of the Sloopcast is also brought to you by the Iron Bean Coffee Company. Kyle, I always tell everyone, hey, uh, some of their more popular favor- flavors are available in K-Cup. Well, you know what? Let's let's, let's talk about it. Um, they're, they have three flavors available in K-Cup. You have the Fierce, the Ride or Die, and the Rage Against the Dying of the Light. The Fierce is their flagship coffee. This is their, this is, or it's one of their flag. They have, they have a few. Um, the fierce uh, combines strength of a ta- uh, strength and taste of an America man. God, I can't. Why can't I never read when the camera's on? Um, America's local coffee roaster, convenience of a single serve cup. Um, the ride or die. That's a medium roast. It's maybe one of my favorite coffees from the from the good people over at the uh, Iron Bean Coffee Company. I, I clicked on these thinking that they would still have the descriptions for the coffees and then they 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 didn't. Um, <laughs> so it's throwing me. Uh, so let's pivot. We're pivoting. Let's just talk about the ride or die for a second. Uh, the ride or die, one of my favorite ones. This is available in K-Cup. Um, this is a gentle yet distinctive version of the classic American breakfast cup. Suburb, uh, superb when drip brewed and enjoyed black roasted and turned with cocoa nibs a brazilian yellow bourbon bean with superb s- smoothness and flavor uh you'll find notes of caramel hazelnut and sweet cream a gently acidic coffee with melodic sweetness delicate complexity milk chocolate perhaps a hint of fresh cut cedar that's what makes it great in my opinion um uh, and a shimmer of jasmine running uh f- 
running from aroma through the cup in a clean, refreshing finish. That is a ride or die. Uh, one of my absolute favorite coffees of all time, regardless of company, regardless of flavor or not or whatever. It's just it's a it's an amazing coffee. So. You can buy the rider. You can buy the rider die, or maybe find your new favorite coffee over at the Iron Bean Coffee Company. dot com. That's Iron Bean Coffee, America's local coffee roaster. All right, rest of the games here. Yes, Derek. Stuart. Words are hard. I'm gonna pull you back up here on my screen. So, rest of the games here. Let us. So we we move teams that we want to talk about to the right. That way, we're not bothering trying to rank everybody here. So. Let's start from the top here. Oregon. Oregon losing to Stanford. Yeah. Uh, what is it? 31 to 24 in overtime. There was a point in the fourth quarter where, where Oregon had a 99% probability to win and loss. Yeah, they kept just handing. Uh, it looked like Stanford was going to turn the ball over on downs or they just weren't driving the ball very well when they needed to drive the ball well at the end of the game. Um, But then Oregon just kept handing them penalties, pass interference and roughing and all all this stuff. And they just drove Stanford down the field for them. Um, Mm -hmm. So yeah, uh, Oregon loses. I don't believe they, they they no longer belong in the S tier, but um, an overtime loss to a Stanford team that's playing pretty well right now that they shouldn't, absolutely tank they shouldn't go down to the b tier i don't think but they definitely fall down to the a tier yep yep i agree they can move down to the a tier cincinnati kyle big win over notre dame they look solid on both sides of the ball they don't have the talent level of some of the other teams especially from a depth standpoint I. I have a I have a hard time putting him to S. I have a hard hard time putting it's to it's S. hard. I I still think they should belong to A. Maybe just put them at the top of the A tier there. But man, we're we're not going to know much about the Cincinnati team for the rest of the year. Yeah, it's. I mean, yeah, they, I think I think I, I don't want to put them at S because I just don't feel like they have that sort of talent. Um, mm-hmm. but. Man, they're a very solid A. Yeah, no, it's very solid A. Taking care of business every every game here. They, yeah, they they took care of Indiana the previous week, and Jared said Notre Dame this week here. But I don't know. They're they're gonna. I I don't know if we want to spend time with this, Jared. But do we want to make the case of who who should get in here? Like it's who, it's, who, it's the first week of October, my man. It's the first week October. Like I, I would love to start talking playoffs already, but with the, all the chaos we've seen already this year, the landscape is just going to change so much between now okay. and then. All right, fair enough. All right, Oklahoma. Another. Oklahoma, uh, sorry, you go ahead. This is this is three games in a row now that Oklahoma came out with a win here. They. Hold off with a seven point, seven point. Yep. Yeah. Seven point victory over Nebraska came up with a three point victory over West Virginia and came up with a six point victory over Kansas state. They None won. of those teams yes. are good. Yeah. They won. Yes. But as Jared said, none of them are that good. Upset alert possibly this weekend. Yeah. As they take on, take on their rival Texas. Maybe. I, we, I, th- I think I, I think just because of the talent that they have, they're still undefeated. I think you still have to keep them on the A tier. But, but man, three three straight near losses against incredibly inferior talent. I think we I need know. to seriously consider dropping them to B. Uh, so, Gangland says they are a B tier team and will drop one soon. Should we drop them now, chat? Or because Kyle and I seem kind of, I think we should drop them to B. Kyle seems hesitant. What does the chat have to say? Gangland says drop them. Anyone else? Anyone else with a opinion they want to share? Well, uh, looks like, oh, here comes Stuart. Stuart's going to say something. 
Sarah's going to say something. Um, but bye. I, maybe B. I think he's saying B. Kyle, I think we're outvoting you. We're dropping Oklahoma right. to B. I don't. I don't agree. But all right, the chat we, has. We went here. with the chat tiebreaker on that one. <laughs> all right. So with Cincinnati beating Notre Dame, drop Notre Dame to the B tier. That's totally fair. With Florida losing to Kentucky. Are you, they, this is their to... second loss. They do not belong in A tier. They simply cannot be in A tier with two losses in the first but week. Of they, they they can they can no longer move to the A tier right now. So, uh, so they yeah. would need some help to move to the A tier. Yep. So B tier, perfectly fine with that. Then, uh, yeah, borderline C. I, I agree, with Stuart. But we'll keep them at B for right now. UCLA. Oh, I'm going back. Drops to their second game. game. UCLA losing again. This is their second or third loss. I'm second. How that number? Okay, their second loss here. They lost to Arizona State here, who is now ranked. We'll get to them here soon. But I think you put UCLA to C tier. Yeah, a lot of people thought highly highly of them early in the early in the year. I wasn't buying the hype, and now they're showing here. Yep, UCLA down to C. Coastal Carolina. Uh, I, I know they're not playing the best teams. Um, they played Louisiana Monroe this week. Um, mm-hmm. But the teams that they're playing that are bad, they are slaughtering. Yeah, I'd, I'd keep them at B tier right now. Can can I'd we at least have the B. conversation of A? No, nope. I'm not letting you win this one, Jared. It's a B tier. OK, but we're going to have the conversation again next week. Mm-hmm. Arkansas, Arkansas loses big. Now, if this was close, if this was close, I would keep them. I would keep them at the B tier. But man, I mean, I know this is their first loss, but they got just destroyed. Yeah, they got yeah. destroyed by Georgia. Now, does that say? Does that say a lot about Georgia, or does that say about Arkansas? Both. I think it's both. I think it's both. I think you put. I think you put Arkansas down to the C tier, in my opinion. I just not because not... they lost, but because they weren't competitive. Exactly. Yes, exactly. And Ole, Ole Miss, Miss here. Again, Ole Miss. Not competitive. It's I feel like I, I see this almost every year with Ole Miss. They seem to be winning a few games and then people thinking highly of them. I, I just never buy into that hype. Yeah. yeah. Move them down to the C tier. Yep. Never bought into that I mean, hype. Yeah. All right, here, here's an interesting, Jared. I, I, th- I think this next one here, I kind of feel similar with Coastal Carolina. BYU winning, winning every game here. They've currently cracked the top 10. They're, they're 10th right now. I, I think you put BYU in the B tier. All right. I... I'm not going to fight you on this. I'm just going to go ahead and go with it. Um, (laughs) All right. I just don't want to spend a ton of time debating BYU. All right. Uh, Texas A&M losing to Mississippi State. Man, this is another very disappointing who was highly, highly rated early in the year and just not, not who a lot of experts thought they were going to be. Maybe you can keep them at C. I think they're still a very talented team, but they're just not performing. They're just not performing on the field. I think, and basically what you just said right now also applies to Clemson. Um, Although a lot of respect to Boston College, they really should have, I don't want to say should have won, but those teams looked evenly matched to me. Uh, Kyle and I, during the Friday episode, basically said, how on earth is Boston College a 15-point dog to Clemson? It felt like such an easy bet that it felt like a trap because in my mind, they were basically even teams. And then Kyle agreed. He didn't disagree with me at all. And we were proved right. Uh, Boston College and Clemson looked like equal opponents. They did. They did. So So I think they both belong in six here. If they if they if they lost that game, I'd move him down to D. I would have moved him down to D if they lost that game. All right, Kyle, Oklahoma right, State. Uh, How about that? How do you think about Oklahoma State? I, th- I think you move them up. 
you move them up here. They're they're winning games. Uh, they they got a they got a decent win over Baylor, taking um giving Baylor their first loss here. I think you move them up to see. I we'll, we'll see how they do. They are undefeated right now, but if I look at their schedule, uh, who, they do have who, they do have next week off. But then they got back to back games against Texas and Iowa State. So that's that's those are going to be really two tough teams for Oklahoma State. We'll see how they do. So. I feel comfortable putting them in the C tier. I I don't. Who who have they beaten, Kyle? Uh, Kansas State and Baylor, who at the time, whether you want to make this argument at the time, at the time, were both uh, in the top 25. Woohoo. Okay. Who were their out-of-conference games? Uh, Tulsa. Mm -hmm. And Missouri State, who... They beat by they beat just by seven points. And and what was the final score of that Tulsa game? Uh, it was twenty eight to twenty three. So just so we're clear, Ohio State beat Tulsa by significantly more points than that, and we were ready to burn down the entire but, football program. Jared, you, you and I both know the game was a lot closer than that midway through the fourth quarter. Uh, still. Okay. All right. Keep them at C tier. I'm fine with that. Kentucky. Kentucky. At least, yeah, uh, they got to move up. You get a win over Florida. You can move up the C tier. Agreed. Yep. That's exactly what I was going to say. The C, yeah. C, I'll just leave it. At, yeah. I'll just, I'll just leave it at that there. It's not, it's not like C, it's not like C tier is some sort of exclusive club at this point. Yep. Auburn. I think you, I think you move them up to C. It, it's not easy. Going over to, um, it's not easy going to Death Valley at night and pulling out a win there. Have you seen LSU play? Yeah, I have. That's why they're in the D tier. They beat. They beat. Uh, I don't know if they belong in the the D D tier. tier. I think. I think LSU belongs in the E tier. (laughs) I don't. Okay. I I I do not want to move Auburn up, and I do want to move LSU down. In fact, I'm just going to do it because I have the mouse. Well, you don't want to move that. No. <laughs> there you go. All right. Well, this next one, I'm I'm winning this here. argument here. NC State. NC State um continuing to win. Uh they they are now ranked. They came out, they barely beat Louisiana Tech, but I think their win that they had against Clemson and then continuing to win here. I think they move up barely, just moving up to the C tier. That's a, yeah, well, well, okay. I mean, I think they're real borderline. And since I won the last argument, I'll let you have it. Yeah. All right. Arizona State. Uh, Arizona State's the team that uh, that beat UCLA here. Do you think Arizona State should move up now? I'm I'm kind of on the fence whether to move them up to the C tier or keep them at the D tier here. I don't have a strong opinion in either way. Does anyone in the chat have anything to say about yeah, their own? Their only loss is to currently 10th ranked BYU. They have taken care of business, all the other games, granted not as good competition, but they've taken care of business, all the other games here. Okay. Maybe you can move them up. We'll move them up. I, I don't, I don't have a strong opinion either okay. way. All right. So all right, in Stanford, up. In Stanford here, do you, do you move Stanford up after beating Oregon? What what are their other games? Can you pull Let up that Stanford pull, schedule for me? They are currently three and two right now, where they beat USC and Vanderbilt. Okay, who'd they lose to? Kansas State and UCLA. Uh, yeah. Okay, we'll move them up. Like I said, it's not like C tier is some sort of exclusive club right now. Mm-hmm. And... All right, Kyle, I want to uh, add, we had Fresno uh, lose this week. Um, I think they may have been slightly overrated anyway, but we never put them on the chart. So let's enter them onto the chart. What's what's their, who are their mm-hmm. wins and losses at this point? So they have beat Connecticut. Uh cp i'm not even sure who cp is how poly okay ucla and unl that would be california then right you see 
wouldn't be Connecticut. That would be. Oh, CP is Cal Poly. Okay. Okay. So gotcha. Yeah. I, I, I guess D tier, uh, maybe E. Fresno's best. Who are their best wins? Because weren't they UCLA? Just... They beat UCLA. They almost beat Oregon. If you remember week two, yeah. Oregon struggled. So maybe, maybe D, maybe D. I was, I was maybe trying to make a case for, for C, but okay. Uh, Houston, I think maybe we should chart Houston. Uh, let's so see. Houston beats T- Tulsa handily 45 to, to 10. And their other, their other wins are to Navy, uh, also to Grambling and Rice. And they lost to Texas Tech. Oh. I believe we have Texas Tech down in the E tier. So probably, probably E tier as well. E tier sounds like the appropriate move. Kyle, um, what's, what's Oregon State doing right now? I feel like maybe we have Oregon State improperly in the F tier. Like, I feel like F tier should be the bottoms of the bottoms. Um, and I know traditionally that's where Oregon State is, but I feel like they're probably doing better than that right now. Maybe you can move them up, actually. So they wins versus Hawaii, Idaho, USC, and now Washington. Yeah. And they do have the loss. They do have their loan loss to Purdue. Maybe I mean, they lost right to right Purdue, now. so that's not that's not great. Uh, but then I don't think they belong in F tier. Okay, no, that's fair. That's fair. I think we we really need to keep F tier like an exclusive club for terrible teams. And I just okay. don't feel like that's Oregon State right now. And I think you keep South Carolina where they're at. Yeah. They, they barely beat Troy. Yeah, I I think you keep them there and, and Northwestern who we added here, I believe. Yeah, we just added just Northwestern. Bad. They deserve that. They're bad. Yeah, so I, th- I think I think I think this is I think this is good. I I don't agree with Cincinnati being an A, but other than that, I no, you do I think, agree with I Cincinnati. think I like this. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. It was um You didn't want them in S. Yes. Yeah. It was a it was um which you were mad at me about Auburn. I think we fought about Auburn. Yeah, that's yeah, I, I'm I'm good with this. I'll co-sign this. I'll co-sign this. Okay. Uh, yeah, I, it was Oklahoma you were real mad at me about. That's the one you were really fighting me on. That's where we had to go to the. Uh, that's where we had to go to the chat yeah. for some backup on that one. Yeah, that that's the one. Yeah, I I still think they should be a just knowing their talent, but yeah. I, you know, Clemson has talent too, and Texas A and M has talent as well. Where the difference is that Clemson has two losses because they've played doesn't. teams. At least, you know they've they've. I mean, not that NC State is. Did they? They oh, played Georgia. Georgia. Yeah, they played Georgia. Yes, but what about their other games? Oh. Uh, they are exactly like Oklahoma, except they happen to drop one of their terrible games. Okay. I mean, how crazy to how crazy to think here? Like their one game that they won solidly was against South Carolina State. But all the other games here, they lost to Georgia ten to three. They beat Georgia Tech fourteen to eight. Lost to NC State 27-21 and barely beat Boston College nineteen. 19- to 13 this could have easily gone the other way where instead of being three and two right now it could have been one and four if they if things turned a little differently in some of those other games yeah i mean look at oklahoma you could make that same i mean oklahoma could have lost the last three games pretty easily that's true too all right, Jared, I think that is it here. Uh, so this is our week five um, rankings here. And uh, yeah, I, I have actually not looked at next week's games here. Have you, Jared? I have not. I mean, I, I know what some of them are, but I haven't like taken a moment and just stared at the schedule so let's, yet. Let's see, week six. So if I change this to six here, Oklahoma, Texas, that should be a good game. 
Uh, Sparty and Rutgers. That could be an interesting game at noon. Keep it, keep an eye on that one. Uh, it's another ranked team, Arkansas Ole Miss. I'm not going to care about that game. Uh, let's see. George and Auburn. I think that's going to be a slaughter fest. Um, Penn State and Iowa. An odd four o'clock time for that game. Uh, that's going to be the game t- to watch next week. And another game to keep an eye out over ACC land. Uh, I'll consider them ACC though, but Notre Dame and Virginia Tech. This is, this is another night game in Virginia Tech. Notre Dame is heading on over there. Keep an eye out for that game there. No, I don't want to and give him more attention, Stuart. I think that's it. All right. I think that's it. That is it. Um, once again, I'd like to ask everyone to uh, maybe check out the sloopcast.com, maybe check out uh, discord.thesloopcast.com, um, patreon.thesloopcast.com. Um, you can check out merch.thesloopcast.com. Maybe we have a bunch of the sloopcast.coms you can, you can be checking out. Um, come, come hang out at the Discord. That's my biggest, that's my biggest, if you're going to do one thing, especially since that one thing is free. You can do it totally for free. Uh, come check out discord.thesloopcast.com. It's just a chat app you can add to your phone. That's it. Um, Kyle, do you have anything in Kyle's corner? I was trying to look here real quick. I don't really. I honestly don't. <laughs> uh, both Ohio, Both Ohio professional football teams won this weekend there you go Bengals took care of business against jacksonville and browns not pretty from what i saw not pretty but still win over the vikings there you go there you go there you go uh what is that is that it are both are both teams like only have one loss is that yeah both teams are three and one right now how about that All right, that's it, Jared. Let's go ahead and go ahead and end us off here. All right. Uh, tonight's ending music will be brought to you by a, uh, a country artist uh, known by the name Arlo McKinley. Um, Arlo McKinley, Cincinnati based, just like I promised I told you I would uh, on the last episodes, you know, giving our Bearcats a little bit of love right now, giving Luke Fickle a little bit of love right now, playing a couple of Cincinnati bands these past two episodes. Um, so with that being said, I'd like to encourage everyone to drink local beer, listen to local music, and of course, support your local podcasters. Once again, this is Arlo McKinley. <laughs>